Hi, I'm Clara, and it's Spectrum time. As the song from the hit musical Oliver goes, food, glorious food. Well, that might be the case, but apart from eating everything, have you ever thought about what happens with food that we don't eat? Wastage is a big concern, and though people are aware of it, sometimes they just don't care. When will we care enough to make a change? Speaking of change, in today's Let's Talk segment, we speak to a 24-year-old who decided to juggle, not balls, but books and stardom. But let's jump into our first story. Do you think you could survive in a place without Wi-Fi, shopping malls, and things we consider necessities? Sounds impractical, but there are actually people who choose to do just that. People from Pulau Ubin say they have the answer. Simplicity. Pulau Ubin, a small rural island off the northeastern coast of mainland Singapore. Untouched by urban development and concrete buildings, it is the last place to catch a glimpse of Singapore's kampung days. In 1993, the government gave Ubin's residents the opportunity to resettle to mainland Singapore. Although majority of the residents took up the resettlement opportunity, some 30 people still stay on in Pulau Ubin till today. Tong 
These residents are very comfortable with the life that Pulau Ubin has to offer and are emotionally attached to the uniqueness of the island. Yet Pulau Ubin's laid-back lifestyle is slowly being eradicated by the fast growth of Singapore and one day, all of this will just be a distant memory. If you had a dream to be a star, but grew up always being told to be a doctor or lawyer or dentist, what would you do? Would you listen to your head or follow your heart? After seeing his sister on the Vasantam Star stage eight years ago, he dreamt of being up there one day. This year, he managed to do just that and made it to the top five. Hari is here with me today. Hi, Hari. Hello. So maybe just to start us off, you want to tell us more about what V Star is? Okay, uh, Vasantam Star is a talent search competition on Vasantam. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's a singing competition where uh, um, aspiring singers can come and uh, display our talents. So this year, Vastam Star actually took a different take because usually uh, it's a solo competition, but for 2017, it's a duo competition. So what actually motivated you to join this competition? Okay, uh, I've always been very interested in singing from a very young age, uh, but my only stage was my bathroom because I was very shy. Uh, I didn't think that I could sing very well. I didn't know if I could sing well. So it's usually, I would just usually sing to myself. And then in 2009, I saw my sister take part in Vasatam Star. So that year, she made it till the top 10. So seeing her do it uh, gave me the confidence that hey, if she could do it, so can I. So the dream sparked then. And yeah, I am 2017 um, on my own journey as well. So she was like your inspiration of definitely, sorts. Definitely, definitely. So what would you say is your most memorable moment on the competition? The most memorable moment, I think personally for me would be when uh, during my first round, the first performance, uh, when I was done with it, when I got the applause from my friends and family, seeing everybody there, uh, that was the most memorable moment. I think it, um, the love and support from them meant so much more to me than the comments from the judges. Yeah. <laughs> so, maybe you just want to tell us about some challenges you might have faced along this way. Like, was it very difficult juggling both studies and the competition? Yeah, definitely, because uh, as you would know, uh, it's not easy uh, struggling, um, sorry, juggling mm. our schoolwork and uh, social life. I mean, I guess you can say the school is a struggle as well. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so now with an additional layer added to it, the competition, uh, it was really tough. Uh, lucky thing for me, the competition started during the summer break. So I had time to slowly ease myself into it. But when school started, it was definitely very tough because I had to run for rehearsals every night. Uh, I'll be very tired, very little hours of sleep, so I'm practicing and at the same time doing my schoolwork as well. But I must say that I only could uh, do it because of the help of my friends. If not for them uh, helping me catch up with schoolwork and uh, motivating me to continue pushing myself, I don't think I'll be able to have come, come through that moment. So 
we are just very thankful for the support of your friends. And then how did being part of that duo really shape this experience for you or make it like extra special? Because you mentioned that you know this there's this additional layer. Correct. So my duo, her name is Sarvejini. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's a very good singer as well. So when we work together, uh, I learn a lot from her. Uh, it also makes the experience more fun. So instead of me just being alone in my room, rehearsing myself and stressing myself out alone, uh, I share the sorrows and the happiness with my partner. So I think that was a unique uh, aspect of Vasatam Star this year. And also the fact that uh, when I go up on stage, I'm not alone. It's really a comforting feeling. Yep. So how, how did it feel like being on stage? And did, did she help with that easing of tensions? anything? Uh, well, it was a very uh, exciting moment. Uh, it was a surprise to myself because I figured out that I didn't really have stage fright. So uh, I really enjoyed being on stage. And uh, having a partner, it was good because I could interact with her. So I'm not just singing to the audience, I'm singing to her, her as well. So I think for the audience as well, it made the uh, performance a more wholesome and extra more special. Yeah, an extra special one for them nice. as well. Maybe just as a final challenge, can I challenge you to just sing one verse of any song that maybe your favourite song or something that you performed? Okay, uh, this song is not something that I performed, but my best friend loves this song, so I'm going to sing that song. So maybe All everybody right. can just clap along. All right. Waiting for a pun again. Sirudi. Kind of a heartbeat. Tirudi. Harada. Nan Kavinian, only part the kit upon a Kavinian. Honest, Nan Kekava, he lay the poduma. Oh, my darling, Nanga coming, put the put the canakel and pending ho. Chorus, Nan Kekava, yes, sir, yes, sir, no, yes, sir, Haragay. Marry me, marry me, Haragay. Flirted me, get high with me, Haragay. Go manda, kuch manda, call a di. Aragiye pin, aragiye pin. Aragiye means beautiful, so. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Hari. That was very impressive. Now on to something that we are all passionate about: food. <laughs> According to a recent study in 2016 by the National Environmental Agency, food wastage is prevalent in Singapore. And as a country that proclaims to love food, we throw a shameful amount of it away. Today, we are here to find out how much Singaporeans know about food wastage. Let's go! The food that is not consumed by humans. Food that you eat after you finish a meal. Food that supermarket sells that's ex like close to expiry, but then it doesn't get sold out because people don't want to buy it. In the kitchen, no, like during preparation, there's food wastage, and then there's also like when you don't finish your food, la. Like for example, my mother, uh, she like she like a lot of stuff, but then she cannot finish it. Then a lot of food will expire after some time. Uh, so those expired food to me is a form of food wastage. In Singapore, it's quite a serious thing, uh, because. Uh, a lot of girls, for example, girls, uh, they don't really finish the food. Uh, like, they cannot finish the food, but yet they, they don't like to share uh, some, some of my friends. Uh. I think it's uh, quite okay. Uh. I mean, I would say food waste is a serious issue globally. Uh. Food waste is a problem in land scarce Singapore. Any source of waste is a problem. And then food, which we need for our sustenance, is being wasted. That's, that's another layer to the problem. I do think there is a lack of awareness about certain aspects of food waste, but raising awareness by itself isn't going to create the solution. A lot of it occurs before it even reaches the supermarket. And so this isn't the waste that ends up in, in the incinerators in, in Singapore. A lot of efforts can be done before the food even reaches the supermarket. It's about how the food growers produce waste and how the supermarkets create demand for perfect fruit and perfect vegetables, where the imperfect fruit and vegetables ends up sitting on the land, never being harvested. The issue of food waste is a lot more than, than raising consumer awareness, because consumers are only part of the food waste problem. How much? Uh? Like, I don't know, that's a lot, right? One bowl? Yeah, half a bowl. Yeah, one bowl of rice.
从早上到晚上哈、哦，你丢掉很多食物吗？没有，没有，没有，没有，一点点而已。拿这个桶而已吗？这些它就浪费一点，真的很浪费，有浪费。这个是很多还是一点点？多啊，这个就多哈、哦。你看它煎起来就吃一点点，啊、这个有些是没有吃完，饭也是没有吃完。这个没有说很浪费，有些好好才浪费啊。People are very ignorant about the way they live, so, and they are very, they don't have, they lack like the basic level of awareness. One thing to do is to stop and to think about, you know, what are some repercussions of like the actions that I'm doing today. It's very simple, like, you know, when you throw away food, it has to go somewhere. You need to take a step back and think like, oh, you know, I throw away so much food every day. Where does it go? Uh, no. No. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. I'm the kind of person who like always try to finish, like, everything is on my plate. But, yeah, there are times where I don't finish also. Morning, uh. Just my lunch. Uh. I think for almost every meal, I cannot waste a bit of food here and there. Oh, the like you pay extra money when you for like buffets, you pay extra money when you leave food behind, yeah. It's more of like uh, practices at home kind of thing. It's not really um, educated at a national level. I don't think so. Oh, no, I don't no. know. No. No. <laughs> Not really, uh, but I think last year I did heard of one, but I don't really know the name. <laughs> <laughs> so th this was an informational campaign, uh, Love Your Food by NEA, and one of the challenges with campaigns like this is preventing information overload. There's so many different ways that people might waste food for each individual Probably only one of those approaches is going to be the best thing for them. And if somehow information could be more tailored to the individuals, then maybe there would be less of a chance of information overload. Stop my mother from buying me a lot of food. Like for example, if you are eating out, probably like if you cannot finish, finish the rice, maybe you can ask the person to give you lesser rice. Don't, don't over, don't over order. Lo. Don't, don't over order. Yeah. Encourage your friends to finish. Your Always food. finish, no matter what. <laughs> maybe some people think it's very complicated, but actually it's not. It's very simple. It starts with when you are going to, the, to, to buy your food, then you know that you cannot finish that portion. Then you just bring along a container, you know, you just pack that food aside, and then when you are hungry later, you can eat it. I think that, you know, if you try a bit harder, right, it is quite a refreshing perspective because it gives you a lot of control over your life also. I think the simplest thing people can do is purchase the food that they're going to consume. Purchase only the amount they need and purchase food that they know they're going to finish. This is Ellen reporting for Spectrum. I think that's it. Maybe we can all do a little something in the end. What do you think? Thanks for watching and be sure to follow us on our eSpectrum Facebook page. See you next week for this semester's final episode of Spectrum.